What's up, y'all? This is the Adapt or Die podcast, a podcast that explores new and relevant ideas for the purposes of self-growth and helping you live a more fulfilled lifestyle. My name is Armel Tala. And my name is Ben Smith. We're two university students pursuing our own journeys of self-growth with the hopes of sharing our findings with you. Welcome back to another episode of the Adapt or Die podcast. Today, we're going to be continuing the second part of our habit series. And on the first part, we really focus on the science of habit and making sure you understood actually how does our brain, you know, build these habits. But today we want to talk about more implementing it. And um, Ben, what are kind of your thoughts? Like, I guess give the people a recap of what we really talked about yesterday. Uh, Yes. So, yeah, last episode, we just talked um, mainly about the the cycle of habits. So the Q the behavior and then the reward, that loop, Mm -hmm. and then how to use the reward value system to take advantage of building and breaking habits. And then also understanding that, um, understanding the fact that your habits kind of is actually built off of these um, neural pathways that are strengthening each time you do it and that your brain decides something is a habit off of repetition is something really important to um, take away from the first from the first part of the series but now we're going to actually try to help you guys implement this because you you wonder okay cool like i get the science i get how it all works but like how do i put this into myself right we have this like pretty nice fam- framework for uh you know all these things of how our brain functions but what are like what are some actually like practical ways of implementing habits so um the first thing i want to start off with is just clearly defining your habits right Mm -hmm. so if i'm trying to implement a habit um, the first thing that you should do is just ask yourself why and it's a pretty basic question but it's it's really kind of the crux of of building the habit itself right so Mm -hmm. i think we can just take like exercise for example that's a pretty common habit that most people want i think it's a pretty good one yeah Um, but you know you ask yourself why do I want to exercise? Mm-hmm. And the answer is probably not the same for everyone. It's probably very different. Um, it could be, you know, maybe you have an injury and you want to get like strengthen like a part of your body. Maybe you just want to look better. Maybe you want to feel better about yourself. Maybe yeah. you just want more routine in your day. It could really be anything. But the first step is just simply saying, why do I value this particular habit? And then just using that as a basis for your motivation i think um to like when you're talking about defining your habits and um really writing out that's really an important step as i was uh, watching a video from uh, was summarizing the atomic habits from what's the guy the author's name james clear james clear great book by the way we're gonna have links to all our resources down below but and they talked about this thing called you know and one of his points in the book was um habits shape your identity right and so understanding like defining i feel like defining why you want to do a habit is the first step and but and also like there was two ways he said approaching habits right mm-hmm. there's um there's kind of two ways of building habits there's the outcome based habits where it's like people are focused on like oh the body that's like that's the base goal for what i want to become right, right? but then there is the identity based habits right and that's when i feel like that's that's more related to what you're saying when you define your habits right like you want to be you want to live better be healthy you just don't want a nice body but there's like an underlying true reason to like who you are as a person like you want to be um live healthier and to kind of bring up an example point um about that not involving but the gym but to do with it, like let's say um understanding why the diff- this difference of um, outcome based habits and focus more on your identity and when we say identity that's like saying okay you, know, you let's say you want to start reading a book instead of you being like you know my goal is to read a book like your goal you know, instead of you saying your goal is to read a book you say i want to become a reader mm. you know instead of you saying Instead of you being like, I want to start a business, you say you want to become an entrepreneur. That's that's a really key difference, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very it's a different. key dif- a difference because, in an example, when you're like, there's two people that will, um that are asked this about like they they're smokers, right, and they're trying to quit, and then they're asked to you know, do you want to smoke a cigarette? There's one that says that says um, he says no thanks, I'm trying to quit. That is the out- outcome based habit because his outcome, his goal is to try to quit, is to quit right but then the identity base the person following kind of the identity base habits of trying to build their habit is saying no thanks i'm not a smoker that's okay yeah so that's actually really i never even thought about that but instead of saying because when you say no thanks i'm trying to quit you're basically subconsciously telling yourself that you are a smoker yeah right so what you're trying to do is create your identity by using actions so in that example you would Mm. you're trying to become a non-smoker by not smoking instead of just saying i am not a smoker and then once you're not a smoker if you if you mentally don't think you're a smoker then your autumn your behavior will follow that yeah and that's that's a really good point yeah and it's like for those that are going to the gym that want to build that it's like 
I want to be healthy. Like instead of you saying, I just want to work out. It's like, I want to be working out every single day. It's like, I want to be healthy. Right. Having that identity of like now being healthy is a part of your identity. It, and I, and I saw this shit for myself mm-hmm. and I will, I, and I bring this up last episode too, about just eating. Cause I was trying to eat better. My skin had broke out horribly and I was trying all these, like, these different things. And I was like, you know what? And I, and I mean, I'm talking about, I ate bad. I'm not going to lie to $2,000 on Chick-fil-A spent $2,000 in two years. The, the amount of like when I Chick-fil-A actually sauce that good Chick-fil-A <laughs> sauce is cracked. Chick-fil-A it's, it is it, that it's good. actually low-key kind of cracked. But I was not eating well at all. But then I started trying to like and then I started when I was pushing myself I was like I want my goal wasn't like oh, I just want to clear my skin because I'm trying to eat this like I want to be healthier. Like it stopped becoming it, it be started off as like a specific goal is like I want to clear my skin. But then as I did more research like I want to be healthier. I want to you know I want to be around long enough but also healthy enough. So it helped me actually push myself start eating better and things like that and it became easier for me. And, and one key point I want to hit on here is just saying that whatever you decide whatever reason you have for building a habit just make sure that it's something that you truly value so it, it uh, you know if someone else says it's important that you go to the gym to be healthy but you don't really understand if you don't why. really if you personally don't think that going to the gym is going to add value to their life and and as far as health like you don't think you're going to live longer because of it you think it's too much time then then don't do it for that reason yeah. you know you whatever you do for, as far as habits go it needs to be a value that you really value. Because if you don't value it, then you're actually just trying to do something that someone else, or what you're trying to do things that society is telling you you should do. Yeah. But if you don't think that you should do it, then simply you just know, don't do it. Find your own truth. And this, and to hit on the last, probably maybe the last one, or whatever you want to add on to it, is this um, this thing of identity, of um, identity-based, um, of, oh, sorry, identity-based habits can also, is goes in a negative direction too. So let the people, and I always say this, the people that say, I suck at math, I'm bad at math, I'm bad at math, I'm bad at math, I'm bad at math, you are reinforcing that idea that you are bad at math. You've given yourself the identity of being bad at math. So therefore, you're going to push away doing your homework. You're going you're gonna to see problems that seem difficult, but like problems are difficult, but there's a reason why there's like, if there's a problem, there, there's possibly a solution. You can find it. So reinforcing those negative thoughts when it comes to um, identity-based habits is... um can go both ways that's why it's like it's important that you focus on trying to use it to optimize you know positive things but then pay attention to also when you're doing it in a negative way uh, yeah that's a really good point i, I like that a lot um I, I took i took i took the point away from ben man. I, <laughs> today i've been i've been blowing ben's mind this he, weekend he's been, he been, he been hitting me with some really good points and i've been doing good research um so the the first way we want to define the habit is just why you want to do it yeah so your personal values um the second way we want to define a habit is literally how are you going to implement the habit? So um, we talked about taking small steps, so mm-hmm. we're going to kind of hit on this just a yeah. little bit here. But when you're implementing a habit, you're trying to start a habit, you know, build, um, start small, right? Mm-hmm. And, and just start with something that's very easily attainable. So instead of saying, I'm going to re- like meditate for the rest of my life because that's, that's a hard cool. it's, it's a hard goal. You no, know, it seems yeah. cool, but like it's hard to like, like think about, trying to do something every day for two weeks. Like that's already kind of hard. Yeah. So by giving yourself a goal of doing it for the, like the rest of your life or it, like basically indefinitely, mm-hmm. it, it's you're giving yourself a goal that's very hard to attain because there's no real end to that goal, right? Yeah. Instead, what you should do is say, okay, like I would like to meditate. So I'm going to give my goal. I'm going to meditate two minutes every day for five straight days. Mm-hmm. That is a very attainable goal. You know, yeah. two minutes, that's not that much time. Um, it's not that hard to sit down for two minutes, even if you're not actually meditating during that time. Um, the point maybe isn't to actually meditate in the beginning, but simply to get familiar with the exercise, get get used to sitting down and wherever you meditate, getting used to being still, even if it's just for two minutes, because that's going to make it a lot easier in the future. And the reason you want to keep the reason um, you define it five days, you want to you want to keep a fairly short time period mm-hmm. because that's going to allow you to carry out the habit for that period in a fairly easy manner like five days is not that long and things happen all the time you know if you're trying to start exercising or something like that and let's say you catch the flu Mm -hmm. and your goal was to do it for three Mm -hmm. months yeah you're screwed you know (laughs) and that's not your fault 
Mm-hmm. And so if you, by keeping your, your habit, that goal fairly short, you're actually giving yourself a, a very good foundation for starting a habit. And also when you think about like, we all start, want to start a habit because of something big, right? We're like, yo, I want to, like you said, I want to meditate every, like every day. That was honestly one of mine. I'm, I'm so, I'm such a nerd for like Zen Buddhism and philosophy and things like, if you can't already tell philosopher name, Armelicus Melius. But um, when it comes to those things, we start, we start, we start these habits by something big. Like I want to meditate every day. I want to, you know, I want to be able to, you know, do a 360 dunk or something like something that's really big. And then you, like you say, it's good to break it down. And one of my philosophies and goals now that I've you know started to learn is have a big goal and, you know, break it into chunks. Right. But this also has to do with something that I, I, I was also researching with like the process. Right. And it's a thing saying like, um, you fall, you fall to the level of your systems. This is another thing from the top. I'm, I'm going to read this book. I only watched a YouTube video about this book and I was absolutely blown away. It's, it's a great book. It honestly is a great book. And the thing they said is like goals are the results you want to achieve. Right. So you write your goals down. You're like, Oh, you know, I want to meditate every day. So that's like the results, what you achieve. Okay. But like the systems are the process that leads you to those results. Right. And it's about if you're, if you have big goals, but you have a failing system, you're never going to get there. You're never going to get there. And listen to this quote that absolutely, I was like, yo, this is crazy, bro. This is actually crazy. But it said winners and losers have the same goals. Think about that. You enter a bat, like I'll I'll use basketball for an example. You enter a basketball game. Both of y'all want to win the game. Like there's nobody that's walking like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to lose today. You know what I'm saying? Like there's nobody trying to catch that L today. Yeah. There's nobody walking into a game saying I'm trying to lose. So winners and losers have the same goal, but it's the process, the the process, the system they followed, what team followed their game plan, what team executed everything they were meant to do, what team really went in there and like had the better system, had the better plays, had, you know, was function as a team better. And that's, that's what separates them. And when, when he said that, Please just just say your points, Ben, because my mind is hurting. Yeah, you know what's so profound about that idea is that it's such an ordinary idea. Like it's, it is literally like the most like if you if you just took ten seconds to be, you'd be like yeah like what clearly the losers weren't trying to lose. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. obviously they weren't trying to lose, yeah. but the winners won not because they had different goals, but because they they implemented them in a, a better way. They literally carried out their goals better than the losers they they executed better it's yet you said like some of the most most profound things in this life are actually simple that's why i'm going to keep emphasizing you guys we over simple we over complicate life most definitely things is much life is much more simpler than we make it seem but our brains and just our emotions make it complicated but how does this relate to habits again i'll try to you know try to you know conduct concise bring bring, bring back bring back that that you you need to understand that when you're trying to build these habits that the end goal, your results should not be what you're focusing on because it's, it, it becomes easy to kind of be like, ah, I don't meditating every day sounds crazy or like, you know, it's, it's very easy to fall in and out of that. And obviously, like we just like we just said, winners and losers have the same goals, but it's all about the system. Right. So you need to fall in love with the little steps. If you cut it down and break it down into little steps, those are those that becomes that starts building your system. You start getting used to, you know, doing five minutes and you become you start to fall in love with doing it for five minutes. And you're like, I can do this for 10 minutes then I can do this for 15. So understanding that break your goals down, break, break your habits down to more attainable habits, you know, start small, small yeah. steps and start building that system, that process, because that's what truly is going to separate you from the losers. And I just want to like, you've said this, we've probably said this multiple times already, but I want to hit this home so hard. Break it down into small steps. Okay. Take small steps. All right. The, the biggest reason that people fail at habits is because they, they take unsustainable steps. Like that's actually the biggest reason because they come in and they say, you know what? I'm going to work out an hour and a half every single day for five days a week. Yeah. And then, you know, like that's for someone who doesn't work out. Like if you, if you're not used to doing that, a, it's already fairly difficult to do that physically. Like your body's not used to that. And then, and then B you're mentally, that's a lot of time you're spending. Right. And see, it can actually be very difficult. So as we talked about yesterday, socially to go to the gym, if you've never like, it's a very unfamiliar thing. And so you really need to break it down into small steps. I'm just going to, we're going to keep hitting that because it is, it is literally the way that I've built every single one of my habits. I've never just jumped into a habit ever. You you guys probably wondering 
okay first off why are y'all even like trying to teach us y'all are college students I'll say we both understand this. This is research that we're both finding to help provide you information. And as you saw, I was geeking out and I learned so much while doing this research. So hopefully y'all can take it. But to give Ben credibility in what he's saying, Ben has a morning routine. And when I say Ben has a morning routine, I don't mean, you know, Ben, you know, sometimes he washes his face and, you know, does what. No, Ben has a morning routine. He'll wake up. He'll stretch. Like he told me his morning routine. And that motivated me so much to be like, yo, what am I doing? Why don't I have a morning routine? I've always talked about having a morning routine, but Ben's actually implementing it. But the thing Ben kept emphasizing to me was, dude, start smaller, start smaller. I'm a big, ambitious person. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to rule the world, man. Ben's like, yo, just start by ruling your own life. And I'm like, ooh. It's a profound thought, man. <laughs> so, um, so again, like when he says, really, he's emphasizing breaking it down. He really does like have a little bit of credibility, not a little bit. He actually has credibility to really say that because I've seen him do it, and I've seen and I've seen how um how much he's consistent at doing his morning routine, which is just an example of one of his habits. Yeah, and it's not like this is. Not, I'm not doing anything special. And and the reason the reason we really wanted to hit this episode about habits is just because you know these ideas, um. We're taking advantage of the science of how our, we biologically function, you know? And so there are days... Uh, so I want to kind of go to a different like area of topic, okay. of this topic that's very related. Yeah. Um, my inner dialogue to myself is very harsh. Mm-hmm. It's very harsh. Like, I, if I don't do something, I'm like, wow. That yeah. was... Ben, that was pathetic. Yeah. That was so pathetic. You yeah. could have done so much better. Mm-hmm. Like, why? You know, like, you're just... That was pathetic. Yeah. And I hear that, and I'm like, dang, like... Why did I, why couldn't I do that? Mm -hmm. And I want to get away from the idea that you need to be perfect. Okay. Because you don't need to be perfect. I mean, you, I I just want to hit this quote. You don't need to be perfect, but you should be on the pursuit of perfection. As in like, like think of it, like you will never reach perfection. No one will ever reach perfection. Even, you know, no matter what you believe in religiously, philosophically, blah, blah, blah. There is no such thing as perfection when it comes to human beings even buildings there's always ways people can do something better optimize it blah 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 but that pursuit to perfection is the only thing that's going to get you close to being perfect yeah and i the reason like i say like don't expect to be perfect or like don't Mm -hmm. don't be so hard on yourself is because when you are trying to build a habit in particular if you think that missing one day messes up the entire habit what's going to happen you're gonna get really discouraged when you're building that habit. Yeah. And so instead of thinking like, oh man, like I just had a roadblock, you know, like I just had like a speed bump. You think, oh man, like I have to cross this cliff. Like I missed a day of my habit. And like now, like, I don't know if I should, like, you know, like yeah. you, you basically come, come to this place of like, I should just cut it. I should just cut ties. Yeah. Like I just, I'm not, I can't do this. It's just mm-hmm. too much for me. And that's not the right, like, like um, it's not the right mindset to do. There, I probably never told you this actually. There are, Probably about once in the week in the gym, I'll be about half halfway through my my workout, maybe mm-hmm. even three fourths, and it's just not my day. Yeah. This happens every single week, I swear. And yeah. I've been working out for like yeah, a very like a, yeah, a, at least consistent. a few years. Mm-hmm. Um, and every single time, once a week, I, I get to know my workout, and I'm like, damn, like I really don't want to do this. Like I just don't like. I get to the end, I'm like I have my ab circuit like waiting for me. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna sweat so hard. I'm like I'm already so tired. I'm dehydrated. Like I just want to go. I have things to do. I'm already behind in my work. Whatever, whatever. Some days I push through. Mm-hmm. I would say about like sixty percent of the time I push through. Yeah. I say, Ben, you you committed to this, and you have, a, like you you told yourself you're gonna do this. You've done this before. Just keep going. But there's a good amount of the time actually where I say. All right, Ben. You're very tired. Yeah. You're you're hungry. You're tired. You're, you have you have things you need to do. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Like yeah. I f- like as a person, like I forgive you for not finishing the workout today. Mm-hmm. But tomorrow we're gonna come in and we're gonna get it back. And it, and so it's not. It's this idea of just saying like, there's not. You don't need to be perfect to implement these habits and be consistent. You're just trying to get to a level that helps you be sustainable, and that's the key. Yeah, no, and, and I really do agree on your point because, like, when you start something, it's so hard to keep going. When you start something, you're like, I'm doing this. Like, for me personally, like, I'm still working on implementing and building my morning routine to be as uh, solid. So my mor- my goal in my morning routine, I just added something to it, too, that just bit like trying to keep it within an hour, an hour, right, is to meditate, meditate for 10 minutes and then journal for 10 minutes, 
read a book for 20 minutes because at first I was trying to read at night. But the reality is for college students, for us, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Literally, like at night, there's so many X, Y, Z's that happen. And sometimes it's just, you know, I'm just not in a state of mind to be reading a book like and going to sleep at that time. So and what if I'm trying to wake up on time? So and so I transitioned and saying I want to do that. But I've not I've not been consistent. There's nights where like I just didn't I woke up and I was like, I got all these things to do. But for me, what helps me is like um, kind of like that talk. Like, I'm, you know, I, I do tell myself like, man, Armel, like, come on. Like, you got to do this. When I journal, I'll write, like, yo, like, I'm really going to go hit home. But I, I have this mindset where it's like, I always see things. I always try to see things in a positive mind, in a positive light where I'm like, okay, whatever. I didn't do it today. I'm going to try again tomorrow. And I remember I, for me, pro- progressively was like, I, there was a thing in my meditating, my uh, meditating thing keeps track of how many days I've gone mm-hmm. on streaks. And at first I was only stuck on two days. I was, I'd be two days in a row and I'd take a break and then two days and I'd break it. But then I finally broke four days. So now right now I'm in the stage where I'm, I'm doing four days in a row and then I'll break it and move four days. But the way I'm seeing is like, hold on, that's progress. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. progress. I was doing two days in a row for like a little bit. Now I'm doing four days in a row. So exactly. then eventually it's going to turn to six and then eight and then every single, like, you know, so viewing it like it's all right if you, if you, if you fail one day, but that doesn't mean you need to stop. And that's a great, like, I think when I started meditating, it was, it was actually really hard. Like I remember, I actually didn't know why I was meditating, which was one of the reasons it was very difficult. I just knew a lot of successful people meditated. Yeah. And so I started doing it and I only meditated, I think it was three minutes a day. Mm-hmm. And I probably only did it like four, four out of seven days a week, yeah. something like that. Um, but as I got farther along, I started noticing, uh, like changes. I was like, wow, I feel more at peace. I just feel in the moment. I just feel very much like light. I just feel light, you know, Mm -hmm. I just feel good. And so I started meditating a little bit more and a little bit more. And then one day I hit like a thousand hours of meditation on my app. I was like, yo, like a thousand hours. That's like a good amount of hours considering I only meditate five minutes a day. Like that's a good amount of days. You know what I mean? And then I upgraded upgraded to 10 minutes. And so like now I do 10 minutes a day and eventually I'm going to do 20, but for now, like 10 minutes, just, it just works for me. And one day I'll get there, but that's just not, you know, it's not the the focus at the moment. Mm -hmm. But seeing that progress has really like, I'm like, yo, like I, I thought the other day I was like, I kind of just want to go, um, take a walk and like hike and just kind of meditate for like half an hour on a Sunday. Like I want to do that. It's not, it's not a habit. I I just want to do that. So it's like that small, those small changes were just, they were absolutely integral and building that habit because now it's something that I really, really, really enjoy. enjoy. Yeah. I really like it. And if you're able to get through small things consistently, eventually you're going to grow kind of like an attachment to it, right? Yeah, and kind of going back to like tying in the science, like I think that I, I definitely get a dopamine hit out of like meditating. Like mm-hmm. I finish and I'm like, I feel so good. Like I, I'm so glad I finished my habit today. Like I, I hit my, my meditation goal and I did that today and I feel really good that I completed that. Yeah. kind of going back like I, I it makes me feel better that i did that because if i don't do it i actually feel uh very much anxious i feel you know I'm like i feel like i lost something part of my day so it's very much a, a motivator now that i have that that cycle that positive feedback loop mm-hmm. we were talking about the reward cue like i i, I crave that reward cue of finishing my my meditation because I, I really do enjoy it yeah and so and so you know we emphasizing breaking small habits down but so for the people that are starting, you know, trying to build a habit, a lot of the times people rely on their willpower. But I know you, you've told me, like, dude, there's a limit to, like, your willpower. What it, What is that limit? So, I mean, willpower, it's, we kind of talked about it uh, last episode. It's similar to a muscle, right? And so everyone's willpower muscle is going to be different. Your willpower may not be the same with someone else's willpower. It's going to vary on a wide variety of factors, your emotional state at the moment, you know, how tired are you, even how late in the day it is, has a huge effect on my, uh, uh, definitely in my life, on how much willpower I have. I've noticed that almost every time that I eat, like, sugar or candy or, or chips, it's usually past 10 p.m., and that's because I've spent so much willpower during the whole day focusing, doing my work, trying to do this, eating healthy, that by the time I get to the end of the day, my willpower is spent. And so we say all that because instead of trying to rely on willpower and you hit this we talked about this is we should really be focusing on our environment and how we can take advantage of uh our environment to really implement our habits Mm -hmm. and and really like help us focus on what we want to do and on the point of environment i there's this there's this um i guess rule that i found it's called the 20 second rule right okay and it deals with the fact that um it deals with the fact if you like sometimes the difference of 20 seconds is what will make you do something or not if like if you wanted to learn how to play the guitar and but you had your you know you made it a goal i want to play the guitar every single day 
but your guitar was in in a um was in like some store some closet right so every time you wanted to go play the guitar there was that extra 20 seconds you having to walk over opening the thing get it out and xyz so then it becomes it, it makes the the um doing the habit harder and so and so what the, the idea of the 20 second rule is two things you want to decrease the activation energy you need to do something positive so for an example if you want to read a book every morning instead of you having the book across your room or downstairs in a, on a bookshelf or wherever you know you typically will keep your books or in your backpack you put the book right smack in it you put the book actually on top of your phone because because where are you going to go read in the morning right when you wake up your phone so you put the book right there and that's because the in when we're referring to activation energy is saying how what's how much time how much you know energy are you spending to go start that activity so you want to reduce that as much as possible because we're always going to go with the path of least resistance right right so the, the, if you can make it easier on yourself to get started because once usually when you get started on something you're like this actually isn't it's not that bad. bad yeah like sometimes i bro i hate writing papers like Oh my! <laughs> papers yeah. will be the death of me. Maybe if there's one just, class. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's just we're STEM majors. Maybe, yeah. but I don't. I don't really understand why. But like, I hate writing papers. It's so. But annoying. then when I actually get to writing them, I'm like, I'm like this actually isn't even that bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in some papers you write, you're like, I actually kind of, you know, kind of enjoying this. You know, a little bit. A, like a part of me doesn't want to admit it, but like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like paragraph two. Paragraph two kind of fire though. Yeah, that's I'm what like, I'm saying. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna show my. Uh, your fr- yeah. yeah, I'm like, yo, I'm L. You trying to read? Ben, I don't want to read your paper, bro. Exactly. My bad. I just I thought it was kind of good though. Yeah. You know, so you kind of you kind of feel that way. But so if you can decrease the, the amount of time, the energy you spend, you know, like of going to start it, it makes it easier. But then there's a, the second part is you want to increase the activation energy. It takes you to do a negative thing. So it goes it goes for the good habits and bad habits. And this is exactly what we were saying when we were saying use your environment. Mm-hmm. OK, so we're basically taking advantage of our willpower here. So um, one of the things that I do is for my alarm i i know that if i put my alarm right next to my bed where yeah. i can just roll over and turn it off mm-hmm. i have a much i'm much less likely to wake up than if i put it on the other side of the room mm-hmm. where i have to go get it right because mm. if i stand up and go turn off the alarm like i'm literally already standing up right yeah. and so like i have to go turn off the alarm and it forces my environment forces me to wake up right and so that makes it easier for me to wake up on time and stay stay up and so what we're trying to do here is basically use our environment to our advantage. So like one of the things uh, Mel said was um, put your phone under the book. So if you're trying to, um, in that instance, the, the goal was basically to make it easier to get the book. But if you're trying to get off your phone for, you know, whatever reason, yeah. what you would do is you would probably turn your phone all the way off, like literally like, like, like force hold it and like swipe, you know, like if you, you know, if you yeah. have an iPhone, if you have an Android, I'm sorry, you'd, Probably shouldn't listen to the pod. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, kidding. We love we love, we, we love everyone. Users. Hey, Google, don't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you you so you know you would turn your phone all the way off and then put it in a corner. That's mm-hmm. that's what I do when I study. And what that does is every time I um maybe I'm doing math and I'm like all right screw this math problem I got it wrong like three times in a row. Yeah. Let me just like go on and like Snapchat real quick and see if anyone's texted me or yeah. something like that. And then I reach for my phone. And I'm like, oh damn, actually it's in the corner of the room, all the way turned off. Yeah. And then I'm like. Yeah, I'm too lazy to go all the way over there. And then I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? I just want to sit here. And so I go back to do my work. And so what I did was, like you said, is I increased the friction. I increased the activation energy for me to go all the way to the corner of the room and get my phone, Mm -hmm. turn it all the way on, and go on. Like that's... By that point, you already feel like you've wasted so much. So you're like, exactly. dude, it's taking this much. Because when it, there was another thing on the example about that is like, if you want to, or an example I thought about, so if you want to get off of social media, or maybe it's just not an example I thought about, but you know, it's a pretty common one. If you want to get off of social media, and um, the one of the best ways to do it is to delete and like unlog yourself out of those apps because think like when i think about logging into accounts when when i have to connect my accounts from like it's so annoying like doing just just setting up the um the tiktok was like i need you to log in i'm like oh i gotta like even though you have your password saved somewhere just the fact that i have to go like open up that account and then go do that and then like click click it in and you know you know you use a recommended password so it's like complicated as 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 it can be so you got to make sure you type it in right so all this time i'm spending i'm always like i'm wasting time yeah you're but, just like screw this this yeah. is not worth it yeah and it i don't it's it's weird too how like 
you'll feel like you're wasting time doing that one thing that just needs to be done. But then when you're scrolling through Instagram, you are wasting mad amount of time, but don't even realize it. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And yeah, um, so we can use it to, to help us not do uh, bad habits. We can also use it to help us reinforce good habits. Mm -hmm. um, so like an easy thing to do. Um, one great example I heard was like some people, like if you go to work, especially if you, if you're out all day, yeah. one of the things you can do is you can literally wear your, you know, if, you, if your gym clothes aren't too, uh, aren't too like casual and you can wear them all day, it's helpful to wear your gym clothes all day if you're going to work out after you finish your work day yeah. and then maybe have the gym like on the way back. Like, like you have a gym that's like in between your work and your house and that, that really makes it easy because like you already have your clothes on it's on the way home like you all you have to do is like you're already telling yourself like i'm gonna do this like you have there's you don't have to change clothes you don't have to go home and like get all your stuff and then go to the gym like you're literally like it's just there for you mm -hmm. so by like decreasing that friction that activation energy to do things it's gonna make it much easier and you're, what you're doing is you're literally reducing your willpower by by changing your environment and that makes it easier to carry out your habits exactly exactly and i there's some there's some pro, uh, thought that I had when it comes to um, I guess not less about like the environment, but this this is just something that I, I, I forgot to hit on. It's this quote that I told you earlier that was just so profound, and we can go into about how building habits and everything. And so it's our thoughts are infinite possibilities of who we could be, but the thoughts we act on are reflect our true nature. So let me repeat that because I don't feel like I said that smooth enough. Our thoughts are are. <laughs> Our thoughts are infinite possibilities of who we could be, but the thoughts we act on reflect our true nature. That's such a powerful quote. It, it's such a powerful quote. And then like when I earlier, when I was discussing about um, identity based um, and this it ties really with identity based, uh, you know, habits when you're building those habits is like you have all these thoughts about what you could do. Right. Like I want to be I want to become I want to meditate or I want to become a rock star. or I want to. I want to, you know, jump off of... Uh, I like how you just used, you said meditate <laughs> and, and rock star. Like, like, the, <laughs> like the most like polar opposite things. Yo, Zen life or that rock star life? Who knows? But so you have, you say all these different things. There's so many thoughts that go across your head. But what you're actually acting on, right? What you actually act upon is who you are. And when our thoughts and our actions align, we're at peace, right? We're at peace. And when those thoughts and actions don't align, we're in chaos. So the whole point of like building habits is to get your thoughts and your actions to align because once you've once you've gone there and that's why you want to start smaller. Right. So you, you might have an idea of like I want to meditate, but it's hard to just have your action align when it's something so big. Like instead of you saying like you said smaller steps, instead of you doing like for thirty minutes, it's much easier to have your thoughts and the action of five minutes align. So then you're at peace when it comes to meditating. In that state, that behavior becomes easier. It becomes something where you feel at peace. You're like, I can actually do this instead of it being like chaos when you first start trying to meditate for like thirty minutes and you're like like you're just you know Abs right because and especially if you don't like let's say you're starting meditating right and you get to 15 minutes out of your 30 minute goal and you're like you're like what am i doing like i don't even know what i'm supposed like i don't even know how to meditate like yeah. this is so weird like whatever whatever it's going to be really hard and then like you said like if you don't hit that it, you feel like internal chaos because yeah. your goal was hit 30 minutes but you didn't hit that goal mm, so now you're point. you're you are like who you want to be and who you are are, are not together, right? Yeah. But if you make it easier, right? Then, and, and the reason I say that, if, if those, if you're, who you want to be and who you are aren't the same, you're going to feel really like bad about that. Mm -hmm. And what's, what you're probably going to do is not go meditate more. You're probably going to cut off that thing. You're probably going to say, that's not who I am. I don't want to do that. So instead, by making small steps, right? You say, I, who I want to be is meditate five minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you've met that easy goal. And now you're in line with yourself. And that's going to reinforce you further. Exactly. Exactly. And then when you also, there's another thing. I don't think you really hit home on this, though, like tracking your habits. Yeah, I, I almost forgot about that, actually. Yeah, like, I, I feel, you know, Ben, we, before we started this episode, Ben was like, dude, tr like, he even last episode, he just kept talking about, bro, like, tracking your habits. Start. Like, when I, I was like, dog, I get it. <laughs> Whoa, like. <laughs> and and, and but, when we say track habits, like, it doesn't need, the, the ironic thing to me about tracking habits is that it, it itself is a habit. Like, <laughs> so it's like, yeah. you have to start the habit of tracking, tracking your habits. habit before you can actually be, really consistently be, be track habits. your habits. So that's probably the first habit. Yeah, so that, you should start with that. Um. <laughs> But let's let's give like a quick uh Yeah, give a quick rundown of, like of it how... and then I wanna explain an idea called don't break the chain that okay. goes hand in hand with it. Yeah, so 
Actually, how about you start with the don't make the chain, and then I'll just kind of Im- give, give it how to implement that. Okay, yeah. okay, guys. So, um, I, I feel so special. I'm about to, you know, take the stage. But so, well, there's this idea, um, and it's apparently it came from Jerry Seinfeld. Some somebody said, uh, uh some I actor so, had yeah. asked him about this, and he and he calls it like the don't break the chain method, right? And it and it deals with the fact of tracking your habits as, and the kind of the idea is like when when you start a habit, let's say you like I want to meditate every day. We we are on the topic of med. It's just an example. Some, we want to read a book every day. You know, let's 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 talk yeah. about that. So some we want you scholarly wanna, things, some scholarly things. But so you want to read a book every day, and so you each time on your calendar you put X every time you read a book. Completed it X. Completed it X. Completed it X. And that's the chain you're building. You're building these chain days, and you're seeing those X's build, and you're or you're seeing the number in your phone add up like oh three days in a row, four days in a row five days and like oh so, i'm getting kind of you know, so good you start at this. seeing the chain so there's so there's so this method method methodology works but like why so there's two things there's a release of dopamine and if you watched our previous if you watched part one the science the science of habits um of this time series is we talked about dopamine and how dopamine plays a huge fact in uh, a huge role in us um building habits because our brains is wired to repeat actions that release dopamine and so it's like a feedback loop so, you know, you do it and your brain releases. It's like, ooh, this is this is good. This is good. You know, so, right. you, you know, you, you you keep wanting to do it. Your brain's like, oh, no, that's a good thing. So and, you know, the more dopamine, the more you do it, the stronger the connections and the, the habits becomes. And so it works because you're consistently doing this thing. You're you're and the, the idea of just crossing it off, seeing the numbers increase, releases even more dopamine than you just finishing it because yeah, I can tell verse. I can tell you firsthand it's very satisfying. Like if I hit like a, a perfect week of my habits, I'm like, yo. I am a god. No, like, yet. Me, I am. I am. I am Poseidon. Quick, I am quick legendary. Quick side note story about Ben, though. So this man Ben has a habit, uh, has a calendar where he tracks his plans, right? And so you know, in the point of it, there's boxes. He uses boxes to do it. And, but when he would finish his task, he would be like, he just delete them. He would delete the box. He would delete the box when you're supposed to click it, so it checks. I'm it, like, to, to give context, the box, like it, you can you can literally click the box and, and it, it checks it off and it crosses, and it, crosses it, it out, off. and it's and very it, satisfying it's, actually. It's actually it's very satisfying. I was like, Ben, dude, why aren't you doing that? You were missing the dopamine. But <laughs> that's but a side. To, note. But to get back on point, it's just like so doing it, seeing the number grow, seeing you cross off the line, seeing the just the perfect connection of X's of cross cross dates go through gives you more dopamine and you know continues to reinforce that feedback loop and then second is this idea of loss aversion and loss aversion it just deals with the fact that once the chain becomes bigger and bigger and bigger you don't want to break it because the idea is that <laughs> is that okay so this is quote from daniel common Ka- mm, comment com whatever this really smart dude economic e- economics or whatever yeah, sure. yeah just, and just so, roll with it and he um so the, the quote is uh change that makes things worse loom larger than improvements or gains so to break it down give you an example so our desire to avoid losing five dollars is greater than our desire to gain lose gain five dollars so if you think about if you if you lose someone in a relationship that hurts way more than when you first meet someone that you think really you know it's like the hurt yeah. is greater than the feeling and the emotion and love that you might gain at the beginning so right like the magnitude of pain like the ma- the emotional magnitude of losing someone mm-hmm. is much greater than the emotional magnitude of, of finding someone you love. Exactly. And if, for those that don't understand what magnitude means. Sorry, it's, physics things. <laughs> so bad. those that don't understand what magnitude is, it's just kind of like abs- absolute value. Yeah, absolute value. So, so you just like, even though it's negative, like you may, the feeling, we'll, we'll quantify it. So the feeling of losing someone could be like 50, right? But the feeling of gaining gaining someone, it could be negative 50, but the feeling of gaining someone is like 25. But the magnitude is, it's 50. Like 50 is greater than 25. Yeah, it, so yeah, it's, You can think of it as like how far away from zero. Like yeah. that's, that, that That would be its value. Yeah. So, but in the, in the idea of loss aversion, so that, that idea, and it comes from ancestors, like it low key, if you think about it, they couldn't afford to lo- like if you yeah, lost food if you, you how would- do they they lived like tribally too yeah. so it's like if you lose a member of your group and they, they're a fairly small yeah. like group so if you lose someone it's like it's like we just lost someone who contributes to to us like yeah. that's a part like they do functions in our in our so it was it was actually very helpful for them to have that loss of version because it helped them survive it helped and them so survive. it's actually ingrained in us to to not uh want to lose mm-hmm. um you know things and and the reason the chain is so powerful is because when you break the chain, you're not losing the habit for the day. You're losing the entire chain. So mm-hmm. the heart. So the bigger the chain is, right, the more like you lose. So it's like if I've, I'm not gonna use meditation. Yeah. If I've exercised, um, 
let's say five days a week, I've hit like my goal is five days a week. If I've hit that goal for four weeks in a row, I haven't missed a day, then I'm not like if if I'm thinking of not going to work out a certain day, I'm not losing a workout on that day. Yeah. I'm losing a four week streak of working out, which sounds way worse, right? Because then yeah. I'm like, all right, I just got to push through. Like I can do this. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm gonna keep this streak going. So it's like that loss aversion is really helping you. By, by getting all your momentum and really putting it behind you to like push you even mm. more. I want to give another example. Last example we'll give just because I think this one, this one, I, I really do feel this one. So let's, you're in sports, you're playing a sport or whatever, basketball, football, whatever sport. You go, you know the feeling when you go on win streaks and y'all are winning and winning. It's fun. It's fun. Each win is like fun, but each win isn't like the magnitude of like the magnitude of feeling you get from like the previous one to this one is it's just really you can't really tell the difference you're just winning you're on the roll and you're you know you're going and it, be, it becomes almost habitual Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it becomes almost habitual it becomes you know just it's just a process y'all are winning all the time but then when you get that one loss you could be 20 and 0 in the season and y'all get it's that one loss devastating it's like the, it's it's a complete plunge so to understand the whole that's that's to understand loss aversion that that one loss, even though in the grand scheme of things, you've been doing it for tw- y'all win 20 games. You've been, you know, building your habit for 20 days. When you break it that one time, you lose that one time. It hurts. But again, I know we said earlier, don't give up after one. Like, again, we're going to emphasize it's just because you break the chain doesn't right. mean you can start a new chain. And, and that goes back to like that forgiveness thing. Yeah. I was talking about like, hey, Ben, like I like, this is like my inner dialogue, right? I'm like, I'm saying, hey, Ben, like you broke the chain. Let's start a new one. Like, that's okay. Like, you're going to break the chain. Come on. Like, you got it. Day one starts tomorrow. We got it. And so it's kind of just that, like, positive, like, just acknowledging, like, yes. Like, you can, you can have a bad emotion too. Like, I I have a negative reaction to to not doing things, Mm -hmm. right? Like, naturally. But there's a certain level, like, after a certain amount of time, there's no reason to keep pondering it because you've already, it's already happened. So now you just got to put it behind you, accept it, just keep moving on. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Man, I feel like we hit some, like, I've learned a lot so much just from researching this. It's actually, it's actually really crazy. But I just want to come, like, do you have any tips? Like, I know you said something, you had some tips you wanted to I tell. think there's, a, there's sure. two, two things that I, I would like to say. Um, the first is just really focus on one habit at a time. I, I don't, um, similar to trying to jump into one habit really far, if you're trying to spread yourself too thin over a bunch of habits, it's, it's the same thing, right? Because you're essentially trying to build five different habits at the same time and that takes the initial phases of habits building is very it takes a lot of willpower it does which is why we use small steps so i would really emphasize to start with one habit i usually like to take about 30 days maybe two months to build the habit and then i move on because usually by then it's integrated enough that maybe it's not fully fledged like maybe Mm -hmm. it's not a total habit for me yet but the friction is not that hard because I've been doing it for two months, right? Yeah. And maybe you're like, dang, like, man, 30 days is kind of a while. Like, I can only build 12 habits a year, but... Let me add a little side note. Go um, ahead. There's this thing, a stu- study has shown, like, the time taken to develop a habit falls between 18 to 254, and, like, I guess the median, the average is 66. But that's yeah. to say that even though, like, some people's days is 18, some people's is 254, so, like... When someone tells you a certain amount of time it takes them to build a habit, don't believe that's like the set in stone number. Everyone's different. And, and it's not also, like, it's not like my number is 24. Yeah. That doesn't know how it works. It just it's, happened it's to more, be at 24 you picked up that habit. Right. It's, it's, it's based on the habit because there are certain habits that take a lot more work than others. So it's going to be based on, you know, whatever's happening in your life. If you're spending a lot of energy doing other things, if you're going through a hard emotional time, that's you're just going to be much harder to build habits, mm-hmm. right? So um, that, that number varies based on a variety of factors, not just who you are. Um, so just understand, like, you know, it's going to take a while and that's okay. And it doesn't, you don't need to fully build a habit before you move on to the next one. You just really need to get through that initial like learning curve, right? Yeah. So that's the first thing. Just focus on one habit at a time. And the second thing, um, don't think of habits as black and white. And I say that and like, don't think this is bad and then this is good. It's really a spectrum. It's really like this is a semi bad habit. This is not something that's like terrible, but it's not like good for me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And the reason you want to do that is because when you say something is very like it's it's just straight up bad, it creates a very much like it's very black and white in your head. So when you do those things, you're you're way harder on yourself. Yeah. You're like you're like man, like I failed today. Like dude, 
Like I can't like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, and it's, it's going back to that inner dialogue of like forgiveness. So don't think of them as, as like A or B, you know, black and white. Like this is bad, this is good. Think of it as um, being on a spectrum because that's really gonna help you understand that, you know, like eating a pizza is not that bad. Like it's, mm-hmm. it, it, if you're trying to diet and eating yeah. a pizza in general is, I get happiness from it. It's so yeah. good. I had a greasy pizza yesterday, or Me two too. days ago. I just had a greasy pizza yesterday too. <laughs> but yeah, those, those are the main two things. Just, yeah. uh, and I, I guess I want to leave on a point. This might be a little debate that me and Ben have. We talked about <laughs> it earlier, so it won't get that heated on the thing. But in my opinion, we talked a lot about willpower. You can use willpower to start. Start like willpower is what makes you start. But then you know habits. Those habits, building the you know the um, the system, building the process, falling in love with the process is what's going to actually make you achieve the goal. And but I want to say that at the end of the day. Discipline is going to be greater than willpower. And to define, like, some people may view discipline and willpower to be the same thing. I don't. I personally view, dis- I tie discipline closer to more of, like, habits. Like, the actions the actions you do consistently, even though you don't want to do it. That's kind of, like, that's really what people say as discipline. But when, we're, when I'm saying this is, like, when you're thinking of it in the time, in the process of habits is you want to think that, okay, don't rely too much on your willpower. Yes, like, you need to think that your willpower is one, it's finite. So, therefore, like like Ben said, when you get through the end of the day, you end up making a bit worse decisions because your willpower, you and that's, know. That's totally natural. It's going. totally natural. It's totally natural. But, so... T- don't depend on your willpower more maybe just focus more on like building the discipline as in building the focusing on focusing on like it's not that i'm going to use it's not that like my willpower is going to take me there like don't think your willpower will take you there discipline is what's going to get you there the discipline to continue to one on one like not talk down on yourself Two, you know keep continuing to push when you don't feel like it but three also realizing that like it's only discipline, it's only consistency, and it's only repetition that's going to get you there. And so that's why I believe that in the in when you're trying to form a habit, you need to value discipline more than you value willpower because in my opinion, discipline goes hand in hand with you building that habit and building the process. Absolutely. I think like you we so we we did have a bit of a a debate <laughs> on this. Yeah, I mean, I I personally think of discipline as the the carrying out of willpower. I won't go into this too much, mm-hmm. but I think what what our, what I'm else trying to say is just focus on being consi- consistent. Is that mm-hmm. is that really yeah. like and like when I'm building a habit, my focus isn't necessarily the the benefit of the habit mm-hmm. itself. Like at, at that moment in time, it's more of just completing. Like I consistently did this habit because I know if I keep doing the habit, eventually the the rewards will will come They'll come they and, will come and guys this is this is uh if you guys want if you guys want this for some reason through my mind stem brain or whatever i was thinking i feel like i could actually write a formula for this and actually write an equation something deal like with all these factors we talked about i truly believe i can because i didn't even hit on the point of um self of like discipline and building habits is a compounding is a compounding effect we didn't even hit we on didn't that. Hit that we didn't even hit up it if you guys want and if you guys want a formula, you guys want an actual equation, mathematical equation, because I am a bit of a math nerd, just comment down below, say, we want that math equation, drop it. And I will. We'll be my drop it on Instagram or whatever. But um, I think that's it. You have any last things to say? No, just uh, make sure that we're focusing on small steps and using our environment. And that's that's about it. But any Anything else you want to give, no, give no, our audience? No, sir. Remember, guys, once you build a habit, you're going to give your brain so much more time to think about things you actually care about all this structure and discipline people will be like what your life is isn't it going to get boring that your life is so structured actually no it allows you to do the important things more efficiently so you have more time to spend yeah. unstructured then your free time out with your friends just do whatever you like actually it. have free time when you're not sitting there going out and being like man i got a paper due or man i forgot to do xyz you've done it you've, you've you know you built the discipline to do it you've built the hab- habits to do it so Discipline is going to equal freedom. Who those that are disciplined shall have freedom. So thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of the Adapt or Die podcast. Hopefully next, um, hopefully this weekend we might have an interview. We might not, but catch us next week with another series. And um, thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure. So the Adapt or Die podcast continue to explore and adapt. We love y'all. Peace. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Adapt or Die podcast. For more information about us, follow us on Instagram at Adapt or Die or find us on TikTok at AOD Podcast. You can also watch the podcast on our YouTube channel at AOD Co. Spelled A-O-D-C-O.
We hope you enjoyed this episode, and as always, continue to explore and adapt. 